a new science. Toxicogenomics aims to bar toxins from our environment and our bodies. We can save years in drug development. The directions for a human being are written in code, three billion letters long. These instructions tell our bodies how to live, how to grow, how to die. Researchers call this code the sequence. Lead, PCBs, pesticides, we've known for decades that these and other substances in our environment can cause genetic mutations or other cellular damage and lead to diseases like cancer. Now scientists hope a new rapidly developing science called toxicogenomics will create cheaper and more accurate ways to test drugs and chemicals for toxins, thus blocking them from our environment and from our bodies. Thousands of chemicals go into the products of daily life. Chemicals enter our bodies in many ways. The air we breathe, food we eat, things we touch, drugs we take. Some chemicals seem to have no harmful effect while others can be deadly. The traditional approach to identifying chemical troublemakers is to test it on lab animals, the ubiquitous rat or mouse. While we share biochemical similarity, a rodent isn't exactly a human. And more than that, testing with animals is a slow and expensive process. Right now, to identify a carcinogen, it takes anywhere from two to five years. We use uh, several hundred animals. It costs two to six million dollars per chemical. And in the end, all you have is a yes or no answer. It is a carcinogen, it is not a carcinogen. Scientists like Ken Olden are pioneering a new field called toxicogenomics. They use genetics and information from the Human Genome Project to study biological responses to toxic substances. The concept, they want to know not only if a chemical causes a disease, but also how it causes the disease. When a person is exposed to an environmental agent, a chemical in the environment, or to a pharmaceutical uh, product, uh, the body switches on some genes and switches others off. And the, the pattern of on and off, in other words, which genes are on and which genes are off, are different dependent upon the chemical or the pharmaceutical agent to which one is exposed. Dr. Olden says this pattern of on and off gene activity can be likened to fingerprints in a criminal investigation, a unique identifying trait. No one fingerprint is exactly the same, and no chemicals pattern of turning genes on and off is exactly the same either. So the first order of business is to map the genetic on-off fingerprint of known toxins. For example, chemicals known to cause cancer or mutations. Once scientists have the genetic patterns of known toxins, they'll evaluate other unknown chemicals for potential harm. A match between an on-off pattern produced by an unknown compound and that of a fingerprint of an established toxic compound would indicate a potential danger in the test compound. In other words, if it looks like a duck and if it quacks like a duck, or in this case a toxin, it probably is one. So once we develop a robust database so that all the offenders, all the bad actors, all the chemicals that cause disease, are in the database, then if, you, if a new chemical is introduced into the marketplace that is similar to any of those that are there, and we can pick that out in a matter of days and say, this is carcinogenic, this is toxic, or this is not toxic or not carcinogenic, so we can introduce it into the marketplace and save years in terms of drug development. If toxicogenomics continues to show promise in spotting toxins, it will certainly make the process of environmental regulation more straightforward and efficient. And that's a change we welcome. For now, that's life. I'm Lucky Severson. The Secrets of the Sequence teaching materials were developed at Virginia Commonwealth University with funding from the National Academy of Sciences and the Pfizer Foundation. 
The original public television series, Secrets of the Sequence, was produced by Ward Television with funding from Pfizer, the Pfizer Foundation, Oracle, and the Council for Biotechnology Information. Special thanks to member institutions of the series advisory board, consisting of Virginia Commonwealth University, Harvard University, University of Wisconsin, University of Michigan, University of California at San Francisco, and the MRC Laboratory of Molecular Biology, Cambridge, England.